So good morning children. So we are discussing about comparative studies. Okay, anatomical comparative studies we are discussing. In that you know very well the most important thing is evidence from comparative anatomy in that anatomy atavistic organ. Sudden appearance, this word you should have to remember, sudden appearance of vestigial organs in highly evolved organisms. Suddenly, vestigial organs, vestigial organs suddenly will be formed. So, those vestigial organs, where they are developing highly evolved organisms is called atavistic organs. Example, presence of tail in human baby is an atavistic organ. The next concept is embryological embryological evidences. What is embryological evidences? We are going to discuss. First of all, before going to the embryological evidences, what is embryology? This one we have to study. What is embryology? From egg. So egg to adult. So any individual organism from egg to adult, how many stages are there? Those are all stages in the egg, how many marula, blastula. The detailed study is called egg, uh, embryology. Okay, so the next concept, what is the next concept is the, what you call detailed study of embryonic, detailed study. Okay, the detailed study of embryonic, okay, detailed study of embryonic development, embryonic development, embryonic development, the detailed study of embryonic development of different form makes us of different forms, different forms makes us what they will be makes us okay different forms makes us to think to think okay to think what is that one to think there is a close resemblance what is that close resemblance close resemblance during close resemblance during development during development this points you should have to remember so first what is that embryology means from egg to adult how many stages are there so that all stages what is happening from step by step that complete information given by the study about that kind of information is called embryology so the detailed study of embryonic development of different forms. So detailed study, different forms make us to think close resemblance during. So all species, all what you called animals, uh, the embryology is giving information about close resemblance during development. All are very close each other like that. We will think about that one. So for example, heart, for example, Heart you take. Heart of all vertebrates. Come on. Heart of all vertebrates. What about the heart all of vertebrates? The pattern development is same. Same pattern. The development. Okay. First uh, tubular structures. Tubular structures to tubular structures. Okay. Tubular structures. The tubular structures to two chambered heart. Two chambered heart. The two chambered heart to you know very well. What happened? Three chambered. Okay. Three chambered heart. Then three chambered heart to you know very well. Four chambered. Okay. So this four chambered like that heart formed. So this indicating a common ancestry for all the vertebrates. So what do you understand this indicating? Common ancestry. Common ancestry. 
okay common ancestry for ancestry common ancestry for all the vertebrates for all the vertebrates so how how can you say common ancestors because tubular to two chamber two chamber to three chamber three chamber to three and four chamber like that where we can see reptiles three chamber where we can see reptiles two chambers two chambers where we can see fishes here reptiles here fishes okay here fishes and you know very well here what you call the birds mammals like that so two chamber to three chamber three chamber to four chamber so evolved means what it is indicating we all common ancestry for all the vertebrates we have common ancestry like that that information is telling okay detailed study about embryonic development makes us the close resemblance during development okay the next important concept is what is the next important concept is so scientist scientists scientists in the 19th century 19th century okay 19th century concluded that what they concluded higher animals higher animals okay higher animals during higher animals during during their okay during their embryonic development during their embryonic development during their embryonic development what happened pass through the pass during their embryonic development pass through the stages pass through the stages okay pass through the stages of lower animals lower animals okay lower animals ancestors okay this point ancestors pass through stages of lower animals so ernest ernest van ernest van heckel ernest van heckel propounded propounded what propounded the biogenetic law biogenetic law propounded the biogenetic law or what is called the theory of recapitulation theory okay theory of recapitulation theory of recapitulation it states that what they say that life history of an individual life history okay what you call life history ontogeny life history of individual ontogeny briefly briefly repeats briefly repeats this point you should have to remember briefly repeats or recapitulates recapitulates briefly repeats or what he called recapitulates okay recapitulates briefly uh, recapitulates what he called evolutionary history of the race recapitulates evolutionary evolutionary history okay evolutionary history of the race this is called what you call that one phylogeny what you call that is that is called phylogeny so simply another way how can you say ontogeny so ontogeny ontogeny recapitulates recapitulates okay phylogeny ontogeny recapitulates phylogeny okay so next one this one 
embryonic stages of higher animals embryonic stages embryonic stages of higher animals okay the embryonic stages of higher animals what will be resemble the resembles resembles the adult adult stage resembles the adult stage okay resembles the adult stage of its ancestors its ancestors okay at this point you have to remember resembles the adult stage of its ancestors for example pharyngeal gill slits pharyngeal gill slits okay pharyngeal gill slits comma yolk sac okay yolk sac and the appearance of the tail tail in human baby tail in human embryos okay human embryos what you call or are some of the examples some examples okay this point you should have to remember okay <coughs> so evolution history of the phylogeny what is that one ontogeny ontogeny means life history what you call recapitulates the phylogeny evolutionary history of the race for example embryonic stage of higher animals resembles the adult stage of its ancestors how suppose tail tail in the human embryos tail in who who with whom is their tail in the humans ancestors human ancestors have the tail but the tail is showing the human embryo also means what is that uh, ontogeny recapitulating the phylogeny so ancestors what is the meaning of that embryonic stage of higher animals resembles the adult stage of its ancestors ancestors adult stage we are seeing the embryonic stage like that the theory proposed by who is that one ernest van eckel theory of recapitulation okay so but unfortunately what happened ernest eckel proposed van eckel what happened here the mention very clearly i'm telling this theory universally not accepted what happened this theory universally not accepted okay why universally not accepted we will be discuss right now see observe very carefully the comparative study the comparative comparative study okay comparative study of the embryo of of the embryo okay of the embryo of different animals of different animals different animals so embryos of embryo of different animals shows shows what structural similarities so structural similarities all embryos are similar look similarities so similarities okay among themselves similarities among themselves this is the word you have to remember so for example the embryo of fish embryo of fish number 1 and the salamander embryo of fish salamander next tortoise embryo of fish and salamander tortoise okay these all the things tortoise chick okay chick and the humans chick and the humans start life cycle life as a single cell as a single cell so that is what you called the theory what is that one ontogeny recapitulates the phylogeny is disproved so what you called the okay the comparative study of embryo of different animals shows structural similarities all are similar characters embryo of fish salamander tortoise chick human all are starting life as a single cell 
then the zygote what is that one the zygote the zygote is going to the zygote is going to cleavage okay they get cleavage after it produces blastula okay blastula then change into gastrula this is the most important blastula gastrula okay gastrula and the triploblastic so like this gastrula uh, blastula and the triploblastic this indicates what is this indicates all the above said animals have evolved from all above all evolved from what do you call all evolved from common uh, common ancestor okay all the animals so what is that shows the same process zygote zygote will be shows the cleavage then blastula blastula after gastrula gastrula will be converted into triploblastic you know three terms ectoderm endoderm mesoderm so what we can all this all having the common ancestors so like this the what he called this uh, ontogeny recapsulates phylogeny is universally not accepted okay the next one is molecular evidences what is that one next concept is molecular evidences molecular evidences so molecular evidences means change change in the sequence change in the sequence okay change in the sequence composition of sequence composition change in the sequence composition of molecule where molecules whenever the word you can remember molecules okay you have to remember dna mm, rna dna and rna and proteins so these proteins only the change in the sequences of composition of molecule dna rna and proteins only what happen across the generation they only transfer to generation the changes okay generations it is a what you called principles of evolutionary biology evolutionary biology okay this is the principles of evolutionary biology and population genetics what you called and population genetics so frequency changes dna rna proteins the frequency will be changed a change in the sequences will be changed from generation to generation so these are population genetics two excellent patterns in the this is change of patterns in the change of molecules patterns in the patterns in the okay patterns in the changes of molecules patterns in the changes of molecules this is the things you have to remember so what is that one so generation to generation in the dna rna protein sequences will be changed this is only evolutionary biology and population genetics this is only will give complete information about population genetics these patterns in the changes of molecules the changes in the molecules will give the complete what you call patterns in the changes of molecules will give evolutionary biology and population genetics okay so first uh, what are the examples for those molecular evidences that one you have to see what are the examples and how which are mainly useful okay proteins okay proteins was important proteins okay and other molecules that control life process conserved among species other molecules what we have to do conserved okay these are most important okay conserved okay so among species conserved among species this boys you have to remember proteins and molecules which are helpful for the life controlling process life processes so what are those what are those on dna you know very well 
RNA and proteins. Okay, DNA and RNA and proteins. Often they called this DNA and RNA and proteins. Often they called what they called you know molecular molecular rocks. Molecular rocks. Okay. So molecules that have any study of these are ready for fire, especially study of evolution study of evolution point of view we will use some techniques what are those cytochrome c cytochrome c okay it's a respiratory what is cytochrome c a respiratory respiratory pathway respiratory pathway it is a point you should have to remember and rrna and rrna so this is helpful for what you know protein synthesis these are the two important things which are helpful for the evidences which are helpful for study about evolution by using this cytochrome c and rrna so dna and rna and proteins are called what you called molecular rocks so these proteins molecules are how these are transferring from one generation to another generation what are the relationship everything will be declared so that's why dna and rna proteins are called molecular rocks so change in the sequence of composition of dna and rna proteins between the generations only creates evolutionary biology and population genetics these patterns only in the changes of molecules patterns in the changes of molecules like which one dna and rna proteins they will be called molecular rocks so, for study of evolution point of view, majorly we will use cytochrome C and RNA for protein synthesis. Protein synthesis. The next concept is, what is the next concept? This is the thing you should have to remember. The next concept is, theories of biology. Theories for biological evidences this point you should have to remember okay theories of biological evolution theories theories okay theories of biological evolution theories of biological evolution how evolution happened how the developmental changes happened one one theory will be tell first theory is Lamarck's theory Lamarck's theory what is Lamarck's theory so Jean Baptist Jean Baptist Jean Baptist D Lamarck okay great scientist okay was the first was the first scientist was the first to postulate the as to postulate okay postulate theory of evolution theory of evolution who is the first scientist first postulates Lamarck okay and uh, theory of evolution is he wrote one book what is this book name is philosophical philosophic philosophy philosophy geologic 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 philosophy of geologic this point you have to remember in the year 1809 year 1809 the two principles here what you have to remember is the two principles are there what are the two principles first two principles two principles so what are the two principles theory theory of theory of use and disuse theory of use and disuse so organs organs that are used often okay organs that are used often okay this is one important used often will increase in size will increase in 
size will increase in size and those and those that are not used that are not used those that are not used will degenerate will degenerate this point you should not remember will not degen will degenerate neck is for example neck is in giraffe neck in giraffe what will happen in the neck in giraffe is an example is an example of use and disuse so use and disuse and absence of next one absence of snake absence of snake limbs absence of limbs in snake limbs in snake is an example for disuse example for disuse theory so this is the one of the important concept so we are discussing theories of biological evolution so first theories of biological evolution lamarck lamarck's theory jean baptist de lamarck what is the scientist name jean baptist de lamarck was the first to postulate theory of evolution so he wrote one book in his book what is the book name philosophy geology philosophy geology in 1809 so first two principles of lamarck's theory is first principle theory of use and disuse organs that are used and often will increase in the size and those that are not used will degenerate so oftenly used for example giraffe what is that one giraffe for here is the giraffe as a plant so here are the giraffe okay so what it will be always will try for the what are called the plants so what will automatically the neck of the giraffe will be enlarged why the neck of giraffe conti giraffe continuously used neck for what to get that leaf so used that's why neck in giraffe is an example of use and absence of limbs in the snake is a best example of absence of okay because snake did not use the limbs that's why the limbs disappeared not use as all that is called disuse so this is the best example neck in giraffe and absence of limbs in the snake are the best examples of use and disuse theory of what is called uh, theory of lamarckism the next theory is what is the next theory is that is the theory of inheritance of acquired characters because okay theory of inheritance of acquired characters that one we are going to discuss so what we are going to discuss theory theory of theory of inheritance inheritance theory of inheritance of acquired characters okay these are the things we should have to discuss second principle characters that are first one about characters characters that are okay characters that are developed developed during developed during the lifetime during the life time during the lifetime of an organism of an organism of an organism okay of an organism or mm, called or called what is called acquired acquired characters acquired characters so in the lifetime so during the lifetime what the characters are acquiring characters and these are inherited these characters are 
inherited like that who said the lamark then lama theory now up to here okay then here one problem will become what is the problem so what is the problem is main objects to lamarckism the main main objects the main objects to lamarckism who are the the main okay lamarckism what is the first one lamarck's theory of acquired characters theory of theory of acquired characters theory of acquired characters okay this disproved by who disproved completely disproved by the great scientist august weismann august weismann how what lamarck said characters that are developed during lifetime will be inherited so the characters they will not be inherited like that proved by the august weismann what he done is he conducted experiments on mice who august weismann 20 generations 20 generations what he done he cut it 20 generation by cutting the tails by cutting the tails he identified one important process and breeding them tails and breeding them what happened breeding them what happened you had all mice born all mice born all mice born this point you should have to remember born were with the tail with the tail so cutted and breeded but actually according to the lama tail should not form but after that but cutted after also the newly formed mice showing the tails okay showing the tails weismann proved what he proved by this one change in the somatoplasm change in the somatoplasm somato means without reproduction without involvement of reproduction this part without will not involve in the reproduction somatoplasm will not be will not be transferred will not be transferred to the next generation to the next generation what he done so he took the mice and cut the tails and crossed but all newly formed mice showing the tails so he had cut the parent tail cut it but the offspring mice are showing the tail but according to the lamark all acquired characters will transfer should inherit but not here not at all inheriting so what is called next generation like that but but changes what uh, what is called august weismann said changes in the germplasm germplasm means gamete or which are helpful for reproduction in the will be changes in the germplasm will be inherited so if suppose change happened in the gametes that will be germplasm in the sense that will be inherited so changes in the somatoplasm will not be transferred to the next generation but changes in the germplasm will be inherited like that august weismann what he called disproved the lamarck's acquired characters or inherited theory so next class we will be discuss about another concept so next class topic is neo what do you call neo lamarckism neo lamarckism we will be discuss okay children thank you very much for this